For May the 16th, 2014, we talk about Microsoft's announcements about the Kinect, Wildstar, and we ask you about your favorite arcade games. Welcome to the 61st level. My name is Cole Ross. My name is David Meismith. My name is Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level, a podcast for people who love video games. Thanks so much for listening, and thanks so much for joining us, you guys. And you will not listening to Dennis Furia. No, no, he's out there in, you know, California uh, with, you know, the majority of uh, nature. Uh, so he's, <laughs> <laughs> Went out California way. Yeah, went out California way. And he's enjoying a nice little vacation, so he's not going to be here for this week or next week. But uh, we march on. You know, he's only one of us. We have a quorum. <laughs> yeah. We do. Yeah. Huh. Neat. Um, I just figured out what a quorum was. No, I've used that word accurately before, so that's cool. Um, also a super majority. <laughs> yeah. That's true, but I think that over, you know, hmm, I don't know. That, Wait, what, that, that, that what presumes we all is, agree. So. What qualifies a super majority? Uh, 75%. Oh, oh yeah, we but, just made it. Yeah, but again, that assumes we all agree. <laughs> so. And is well, it... We all agreed on it? showing up. True. A quorum is the not minimum. necessarily a majority, but more than the the the, not, the not minimum. Not necessarily more than half, but a majority, or is it no, more than half? It's just it's just a required number of people. Yeah, it's it's the minimum minimum required number of participants for a thing to count. So what's, th- what's the one that means like more than half, as opposed to just the most? Majority. Majority is more than half. Plurality is just the most. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Quorum. Welcome to the level of podcast about about statistics. words, voting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. voting, whatever. Well, that, that didn't go like I wanted it to. I wanted to talk about <laughs> my new fan, and but you can't hear it. It's a great fan. But uh, here we are. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. We chose. We chose our direction. I mean, we made our bed. We're gonna have to lie in it. We voted the direction though, which <laughs> we wanted to go. <laughs> Oh, that presumes that anything ever is intentional. So so what do we have in store? Well, we've got uh, the usual. We've got all three segments here. The uh, uh, the brief, where we're going to talk about stuff that's happening. We've got the, uh, the multiplayer. And then uh, the grind, where we talk about things we've been playing. So uh, why don't we get to it? The brief. Now it's time for the brief, where we talk about things that are happening in this world around us. This is the news section, if you're a new listener. Um, yeah, does anybody have one they want to uh, throw up there first? Otherwise, I have one that I can I can do, which is a big um, one. I have one that I imagine other people will have. Okay, we'll so, talk, we'll so talk I would love it. I would love to go first and yeah. steal someone's story. <laughs> <laughs> go, dang you! Uh, Xbox One uh, released that they were going to make a Xbox One Sans Connect. Uh, it's going to be released June 9th for four hundred dollars. Xbox One Two Point uh, maybe Xbox One, X- Xbox minus one. There we go. Um, yeah, yeah. So Xbox Zero. <laughs> so they just kind of like went back on every decision they made. Yeah, <laughs> saying it's a, you know it's incredibly important for us to make sure that everybody has a connect. This is the future, et cetera, et cetera. Like you know, I don't normally say like if if you make a mistake, you should probably do what you can to correct it and go back on it. However. I'm going to also sound like an asshole here and say this shows a lack of resolve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's like the yeah. worst of both worlds. <laughs> a little bit. Well, I feel like the people that really got screwed are kind of the people that do have the connect because I would imagine this would be a significant nail in its coffin. Uh, m- maybe, but I, I-, I don't know. I, like the the, the, the the connect might end up being this generation's hard drive. Where it was, where it was like really neat to have, um, you know, or and outright required in a lot of instances. But uh, you know, the like kind of there's a story that's uh, related to this <laughs> that uh, says, hey, you know, Har- Harmonix, you know, the company behind Rock Band, and now they're working on. They did a Kickstarter for uh, the Amplitude reboot remake sequel, and also the developers behind uh, Disney Fantasia Music Evolved, which actually looks kind of cool. Looks really nice. Uh, they came out and basically said, <laughs> um, there, there, there are two tweets uh, that, that 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 were sent out by Harmonix people. 
uh, on, you know, after this announcement was done. This is uh, at John T. Drake saying, oh, great, super great. And then uh, Nick Chester, <laughs> resp- not, re- not responds, but also says, oh, good. And their official response is, we believe that tightly crafted motion games can be great genre-defining interactive experiences as we've, pre- as we've proven with the Ancestral franchise on Connect for Xbox 360, and we're eager to prove it again with Disney, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the spokesperson came out and said, as avid gamers, we're excited uh, for fans to have more choices out there. As game makers, this platform change doesn't affect our strategy. It reinforces that we must continue to focus on building innovative, uh, compelling, and well-designed motion experiences to motivate consumers to buy our games. Have there been any good um, motion games that aren't um, part of Sports Friends? No, I mean, like, Dance Central is pretty good, you know. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I mean, like, you know, Harmonix, they, 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 they kind of do it right. However, their gut reaction is what's most, most interesting to me because that kind of says to me what, like, I think a lot of developers are. You know, like, just like this seems like a vote of no confidence. They were hoping that their install base for this, you know, for this game that they're going to put out, this admittedly, you know, ha- could have had the potential to be a really popular game, is going to be cut in half. Like, this is, you know, the big fracturing of the audience, right? I guess, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Don't don't care. I'm either going to get a PS4 or a computer. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Just move ideas seemed or move games seem to me like such a deplorable idea that I'm, I have a hard time. I don't know. They I I don't know. I just I mean, don't get it. It has the potential to be cool. I think that you know if I did get an Xbox, it would be kind of neat to have the uh, to have the voice commands. Um, voice commands I could see, but yeah. I mean, I should hope they're not. If if no. they're getting rid of that because they're getting rid of the connect, that's just dumb. Well, no, I mean they've already done the work; it's in there. They're just they're 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 just losing the uh, you know the microphone that that's required for the voice commands. Well, I mean, my freaking computer, like a microphone, costs what a couple bucks. Well, I mean, like to be fair, I'm not like a, I'm not an apologist for this or anything, but that actually is like a a microphone that is meant to be used in that kind of circumstance, right? Actually, pointing out, I think it's like a stereo mic, noise canceling, like it is it is a mic that is specifically for that, and you know, they probably could just market another thing that's like, okay, here is the voice command module for your uh, for you know for your Xbox One, but that kind of seems, you know, to defeat the purpose a little bit. Of them getting rid of, uh, you know, of them getting rid of the pack and connect, kind of thing. I don't know. I feel like the difference is the um, voice commands are a good idea and movement commands aren't. Okay. Um, Why? I just I don't think that I don't think running around in circles is why people play video games. Like, <laughs> I think people. If they wanted to do that, people would like, I, I don't know, if I wanted to dance, I would go out to the local salsa club. Uh, I don't know. Like, 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 like what, you're, what you're saying is the same as, like, why would you play Guitar Hero when you could actually play guitar? See, but the like difference... They're, like, they're, like, they're, like, they're, they're, they're different things. <sighs> yeah, I, I just feel like that it doesn't... It, it kind of strikes me as being similar to, you know, kind of the people that say, like, Oh, if you're trying to lose weight, uh, you should just, you know, like, eat, uh, you know, replace all your snacks with broccoli. And it's like that fundamentally misses the point of why people play, you know, eat snacks. <laughs> why people like. play broccoli. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, broccoli has some great crap. No, um, <laughs> no I, I just feel like. I don't know. Like I, I play video games when I want to not do things, not when I well, want to do but things. But not everybody has that. Not everybody has that. You know, mindset about it. Yeah, so, yeah. I suppose. I mean, so. like, uh, in general, I'm in favor of more experiences than fewer of them. Oh yeah. Know? Like I, I don't necessarily like have a problem with people that enjoy it. I'm just saying. I, I think, I'm not sure that's a majority. Yeah. Or a plurality, or a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, like who, who knows if it's a majority? I think that you know Microsoft has realized they they kind of lost that bet. But yeah, yeah, I suppose know. so. Yeah, I don't know. Like it, it, it'll bum me out if this if this keeps somebody from making a really good game, <laughs> right? It is kind of fast. 
fascinating though how little like the controller of a console has evolved over the last you know like 30 years you know it's it's basically the same thing you know like some input for direction and some buttons for button pressing you know like you know what i mean like yeah. uh, you look at the nintendo controller and you look at today's controller i mean they're at the fundamental level they are the same you know yeah yeah just kind of the notion of you know you put one level of abstraction over top of it and you know i would say that there have been you know slight changes to that you know there there have been like obviously oh here's touch pads oh here's you know like analog sticks are a big deal um Mm -hmm. you know rumble uh you know and like just kind of configurations like there the the, there there are like more subtle ways that that you know like has gotten better but like you know uh, was it gunpei yokoi the guy who did uh who did the uh the d-pad he kind of was on to something right yeah i Mm -hmm. feel like that's fundamentally because it's just a good idea you know like i mean in the same way i mean how long have cars had wheels uh uh, steering wheels not it'd be kind of weird if they didn't have wheels like rubber yeah Yeah. no hover cars hover car yeah i don't know but it's just funny to see harmonics just put out oh great super great (laughs) (laughs) because it does put them in a bit of a situation right you know like they're already dealing with kind of you know a, it's just a weird market. It's such a weird market now. A little bit where I'm coming from, like, I really was turned off, particularly uh, the um, Game Boy um, DS, where, like, every game had to have touchscreen, and usually it was bad. Uh, that, that, that eventually evened out, though. I mean, eventually all you had, you know, like, like Castlevania was, like, here is, like, just a way to manipulate the map, and then there you go. Right. Like, that like, that, like I, that, that was the doldrums when people, you know, before people realized that was, like, you know, it wasn't compulsory. You see, know? And I guess that's my thing, is that's kind of then got me into my default mode, is I want this feature not to exist rather than it to get people to make dumb game design decisions if that makes sense i mean not in particular i mean do you think that having it there by you know by necessity means that they wouldn't have made some other stupid decision in its stead like we you know like just with it that that, that that you know without touch screens would they have you know fucked up the interface in a different way i honestly i would say no um i mean i mean Greg, i'm not gonna say like it would have been like the perfect like you know game that you know achieves enlightenment or whatever without that i'm just saying like i think it was definitely a thing where because the feature existed they felt the need to use it when they shouldn't have and i i don't know just in general it doesn't seem like uh game developers tend to have often uh, lack self-control in that respect yeah we, we we definitely shouldn't have steering wheels anymore because somebody made a PT Cruiser. Which one have you made a PT Cruiser? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so angry. I am so angry that you guys made a PT Cruiser right now. <laughs> uh, obviously, I'm taking that a bit too far, but so I'm trying not to like spit a uh, pop on my screen from laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so that that, that that definitely was my story, Ben. Uh, it sounds like you're getting a little bit closer to uh, to, to your decision. It's down it's down to the wire between a PS4 and a, and a and a PC. No, dude, the wire's always the best decision. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I probably won't pull the trigger for like another six months because I'm lazy. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, abs- yeah, like what, like what, like what will make what will make you make the decision? Do you think is that just uh, kind of like like <laughs> it, will, will it be the day before uh, Arkham Knight comes out and you're just kind of like okay, I've got to do whichever one I can, whichever one will get me Arkham Knight the quickest. I'm going to do. <laughs> It'll probably be the realization that I do a video game podcast and I'm not keeping current on video games. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, don't worry. I mean, we're we're we're, we're again we're in the twilight area between generations. Mm-hmm. It is perfectly fine. The twilight zone. Okay, yeah, a little bit. God, Rod Sterling is American treasure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I really didn't have any other story behind. Uh, like aside from that, uh, there is uh, some kind of go- you know like a little bit of goofiness about uh, the resolution on Watch Dogs. Like you know the stats are coming out and somebody is counting the pixels and you know uh, realizing that uh, on neither of the next gen consoles will it actually be true 1080p or something like that. 
Like on the Oof. PS4, it's going to be nine uh, nine hundred p, and on uh, Xbox One, it's going to be seven twenty nine p. Obviously upscaled, but you know, still not the true, you know, so and so at sixty frames per second. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, I I don't know. It's I, I'm not like the kind of person who counts those kind of things, but it's another situation where I feel a little bit better about my decision to get a PC because I can do that. <laughs> you know, I can so, just get it at the right kind of thing, but. To mm-hmm. what degree does that matter? Because I I know like nothing about this. I I like I paid for uh at my last house paid for like all the channels and then proceeded to watch all of them not in high def because I wasn't smart enough to like or motivated enough to do. I know nothing about this. Yeah. Uh, does can you actually? Tell 900 versus 1080 or like 900 versus 1080 not so much like it actually like that 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 is enough that if you if you know what 1080 looks like uh you're going to you're going to notice it however like seeing them side by side or going from one to the other it actually is appreciable uh last episode i made kind of an offhanded remark saying that the uh the pc version of dark souls 2 is like playing an hd remake of dark souls 2 Mm-hmm. Right now, simply because, you know, on my PC, it runs at 60 frames per second at 1080p, and it looks just amazing. Like, that, like, like that, that little bump in re- resolution from 720 up to that does make an appreciable difference, and especially with Watch Dogs, where everything kind of is in the details, it looks like, sure. um, you know, and some kind of the, you know, the, the, the impressiveness of it. Okay, so, 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 so here's, here's why I feel a little bit, here, here's, here's why I feel okay, kind of like even being concerned about this is because like if i'm going to be playing that part of it's going to be to get a little bit of the spectacle out of it sure and so you would want to get the one that gives you the most spectacle i think the more damning number is the is the 729 on xbox one actually because that's like straight up just a little bit better than what was on previous generation you know sure so i do wonder like presumably um presumably in a situation where, like, you were having a lot of movement, like, while actually playing an action game during a fight, you probably wouldn't be able to notice at all, correct? Mm, it would depend on the frame rate, and it would depend on what kind of, like, motion filters and blurs and stuff like that. Right, right. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see that. Um, and, and, and all that says to me is, like, oh, it's very early on in a console generation, uh, you know, they're going to eventually figure out how to do this, but uh, you know, it's just another one, another one of those things that you know I'm noticing now that I'm on PC. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, did you have any other stories? Anybody else? No, that's why I I, I scraped to get one story, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know. No, so, so we got good. the three in. We got one per. <laughs> why don't we just go ahead to the multiplayer? Triple kill. Boom. <laughs> Multiplayer. So it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you some questions about the life that you are living. And so, uh, Dennis, <laughs> he should be on vacation. Like, he should go away. I mean, like, one of us should be able to get away from this, right? You know, for, 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 for a moment in, in, in their lives. But uh, I assume tweeted from the road. Uh, actually, yes, it does. It does say Dennis. Uh, posted by Dennis seven hours ago, saying, Multiplayer! Some games are best enjoyed in the arcade. What are the coolest arcade games you've played? Yeah. So let's see here. Uh, Ben, what's Sean say? Uh, Just a sec. Sean says... Sorry. Uh, The Turtles slash Simpsons slash X-Men fighting games were always fun if you had a crowd of people and a roll of quarters. However, however, two stick with me there was a tron that was enclosed and you played the disc game (laughs) uh you aimed your shot with a spinning wheel and moved it with the joystick the way the cabinet was built made you feel like you were right in there the other one is a game i cannot remember the name of however um however i remember the details it had two control schemes the theme was you were a moon slash mars rover and had to drive with the steering wheel to collect these gems the other portion was a gun, of course. Um, you could either drive and shoot or two-player. Right? Um, once you got to the end of the driving, you got to a base that you had to shoot the gems you picked up. Oh, sorry. You had to shoot, and the gems you picked up were the ammo you had to shoot the base, I think. It's my white rabbit. I've been, I've been hunting for it or an image of it for a long time. 
Okay, so, so mission for our listeners. If you know what that game is, uh, write into us or respond on the Facebook and let Sean know. Let's hive mind this. Yeah. Because that sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah it does. Did, yeah. did any of you guys ever play uh, Lucky and Wild? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was very confusing. <laughs> um, yeah. Got motion sick playing it uh, just because there was a lot going on. And uh, and just the, the, like the graphical presentation wasn't up. I remember at the arcade fighting over who was going to be the driver because if you were wild or whatever, you know, if you if you were just the the person in the passenger seat. So we should explain what Lucky and Wild is. Yeah, it's a so, it's a driving and shooting game. Except you you, you know you know one per, it's two player. The person in the passenger seat just shoots. Right, and it's kind of set up to be like like a buddy cop film. Is kind of the, the premise of why it has this weird setup. Yeah, and like the first level is uh, it's it's a uh, it's an homage or rip off of the scene in the Blues Brothers where they drive through the mall. Right. Oh yeah, it is. I guess I never <laughs> back when I played it, I hadn't you know seen it. So I never went back and made that connection. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's another one that's actually pretty cool. It's a vector kind of game. I forget the name of it, but let me uh, just uh, look at it. Uh, it's one of the uh, the illustrious pantheon of firefighting. Uh, of, it's you know firefighting arcade games, um, mm-hmm. but uh, it was it, it was uh, um, vector graphics, and the, like one person would sit down at a uh, at the front, and then another person would stand behind them. Both of you had wheels, and the front per- the, the front person steered the front, and the back person steered the back, and so the, the idea was to maneuver around the streets. Um, you know, with this, you know, like cooperative steering kind of thing. Huh. Yeah, fi- firefighting arcade games, I feel like, or have made me like very paranoid of like fire because no matter what I did, like you shoot water at it and it doesn't die. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that one. Uh, let me look at it here. I forget. It's Brave Firefighters, which was uh, like yes. a light gun shooter, except it was right there. Uh, the, 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 there was a handful of uh, firefighter RPGs on SNES too, but that takes us what? that takes us away from what we're talking about. And I can't find the name of the firefighting uh, uh, vector steering game. So if anybody else uh, knows what that is, let me know too. Or if the same person knows what it is, yeah. they can double down. I played. I played both. I, I, I played. I played the firefighter one at PRGE, and I think that I, I I have seen or played the the Moon Rover one, except I couldn't say for certain. It seems like something that would that I would have played. I feel like uh, firefighter simulators is a real niche market. Yeah, but uh, all like when I do a Google search for firefighter arcade games, all it does is pull up stuff like on Congregate. Hmm. Yeah. Oh well. Um, per- perhaps the internet does not have a memory then. Mm. No, it definitely does. All right. Sorry. <laughs> not not if not if the EU has anything to say about all, it. All that I'm saying is, you know, the the one of the future presidents of the United States is going to have a is going to have a shot of their genitals in the Snapchat database. <laughs> it's happened. It's happening. It's already happened. Have fun. It will have happened. Yes, future blue perfect. Uh, David, what's Quentin say? Quentin's uh, no, I, I have to pass this one off. I do not have it uh, serve for voice. Okay, Hydro Thunder <laughs> 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 says Quentin Caster. Um, to be the, the, the instructions there to be read in the over exaggerated DJ Surfer dude voice. Um, so I, uh, I remember getting this game for the PS One and liking it a lot. Imagine my surprise when I went to my local movie theater and found a giant Hydro Thunder machine. Too bad the silly com chatter was drowned out by everyone else playing Max 300 X2 Double Pad No Bar Bro DDR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Hydro Thunder was great. Um, had, like, great force feedback on the handles. And uh, oh, what am I thinking of here? Really, uh, really awesome graphics at the time. The uh, if you're going to do the uh, the the console version, the Dreamcast one, I think was pretty arcade faithful. But that makes sense because Sega. <laughs> no, I actually, I actually spent this afternoon like watching like clips of Keanu Reeves trying to get my surfer voice right, and no, uh, <laughs> I am apparently unable to do this. And you just you just flinched at the very end, <laughs> like you, huh? Hmm. Uh, how, how about how about one of you guys? Uh, or since since I read since I read that one, I'll give mine. Um, I'd have to say Pac Man Championship ed- Edition. I think that's what it is. Um, okay. It is the. 
Oh man, it's it's beautiful. They have it at uh, Ground Control out in Portland, um, but I've seen it in some other places too. It's a cocktail cabinet, um, and it's Those four, are cool. it's four player, um, it's four player competitive Pac Man. So you have four different colors of Pac Man. You have some ghosts. Uh, all of you are getting power pellets, except when you get a power pellet, your Pac Man turns gigantic. <laughs> Um, and you can eat the other Pac-Man. So, yeah. You know, it's it's not Pac-Man Championship Edition. I forget exactly, like, what it's called because Namco Pac-Man has... Pac-Man Cannibal Edition? Maybe. Like, like, like <laughs> pack, it's a Pac-Eat-Pac world. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking great. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great, uh, you know, kind of competitive, cooperative, uh, you know, version of this weird, you know, <laughs> of this weird anomaly of a game that got really popular. Pac-Man, you may have heard of it. Uh, yeah, so that's I, th- I think that's mine just because it's a beautiful cabinet and uh, it reimagines something that I was kind of used to. Uh, David, so uh, to, to to you know redeem yourself, why don't you yes. tell us what Joseph said? All right, Joseph says um, I had the honor and displeasure of working in an arcade as a video game tech while in high school. I got to know my games pretty well, and within my possession were the keys to every machine. <laughs> oh. My my favorite by far was the Star Wars trilogy cabinet. Ooh. Close second was House of the Dead and San Francisco Rush. Uh, with the keys in hand, it meant um, unlimited credits. Best part of that job, worst part was, hey, that game over there ate my token. <laughs> you only got to think we toilets no more, do you? Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> I could I couldn't imagine working at an arcade. Like I got a little bit of a taste of that when I was working at GameStop. Like when a, when a little kid would bring in his uh, Game Boy Advance collection to trying to trade it in, and we would have to break his heart and say, "Oh, you know, each of these is only worth twenty five cents." And then them, you know, looking around, like so, like what it, what it turns into is how much can I get for this many? And so making them make a decision and thinking about the agony that I put those people through trying to decide if I was going to use my tickets to get a mustache comb or a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> like that would just be the that'd be the worst. And just dealing with like, hey, kids, stop fucking in the Jurassic Park machine. Just. Ooh. Yeah. No. Think about it. He he grew up quick. <laughs> <laughs> so. Life will find a way, Cole. Yeah. Life. <laughs> No, sorry, the wrong laugh. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You doing a gold bloom impression? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, so that's a, uh, huh. Uh, I, you know, I really like the Star Wars trilogy cabinet, actually. Uh, um, if only for the, uh, for the um, oh, the lightsaber dueling. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, was kick, that was kick-ass. Yeah. Yeah. Smart I, play. Joystick to double up as a lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I felt like that one really needed a button that was, like, skip straight to lightsaber fight. Hmm. It was a nice little dessert, I think. But, like, the actual missions, like uh, Yavin and Hoth and, uh, oh, gosh, Endor's Moon uh, was uh, was pretty good. I don't know. I, I remember being impressed by the graphics. God, just, why did Sega ever do consoles? Like, they really just should have just made <laughs> arcade games, because that's where they were obviously best. Hmm. Mm. Uh, let's see here, David. How about you? You got a, you got a favorite arcadey? Um, I really, really like uh, light gum, light gum, <laughs> light gum. <laughs> wow, uh, light gun games. Um, particularly, uh, my my favorites were. Um, I liked Ocean Hunter. That was kind of cool. And pro- but probably my favorite was the House of the Dead series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know. Just you know, they're pretty good games. I kind of liked the. Uh, I thought the alternate, like the different uh, routes through the level yeah. thing, was kind of cool. And uh, I don't know. Just it's kind of weird. Like there's virtually you know no actual storyline or like plot development to it, but kind of the implied. Uh, sort of like Lovecraftian, you know, science and magic setting. I I don't know. I really really liked. I think they actually built it out, like the like the, like the plot, because I remember there being like characters and stuff in House of the Dead too. Like, yeah, there there actually were like in all of them, and there actually is a plot that goes like through the background of it. Mm-hmm. Um, most notably, like after the second game, basically like. The, the world ends. Yeah. Um, 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there actually is a plot, but they just never really um, flesh it out in the games itself to any uh, significant degree. Yeah. What I liked is that, you know, with each House of the Dead game, they kind of upped the game uh, on, the, uh, on the actual gun. So, like, if you got, like, one of the genuine non, in you know, Area, 50, Area 51 in an arcade bar, or sorry, in a, in a, in a bar, um, you know, cabinet of House of the Dead, it had, like, the, uh, the force feedback on it. Sure. Uh, so you, when you press the button, it would you know it would it would slide the lock or lock the slide, whatever. It would slide the slide, um, like <laughs> yeah, uh, that's you know not, like not locking the slide. Yeah, yeah. Um, unless you're out of ammo. <laughs> uh, kind of like uh, oh gosh, when I think of Time Crisis, but then they went up to like shotguns and submachine guns. Yeah, I mean, Grad, part of that being the fact that you know the world ended, so heavy artillery was in. Um, was in uh need apparently but yeah yeah the uh the third game uh i believe you upgrade to your like default weapon it's a shotgun hmm. and then the third one um or rather the fourth one they do kind of the time crisis like you know lots of different weapons your default i believe was a submachine gun and you also got grenades yeah um yeah do you ever play uh carnival Yes, actually. Yeah, that that also that was a another game that the game itself was a little, you know, quirky. It was all right. Um, but the actual like sort of pseudo backstory and like <laughs> the kind of personality they put in the actual levels was really, really cool. Yeah. No, and then just again, these horror themed ones, uh, just the, the, the idea that it was. Uh, yeah, you know. An evil circus kind of thing, but again, that that controller, the fact that it was a shotgun and you reloaded by pumping the uh, pump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that was the nice uh, slide, feature. You, you slide the slide, you pump the pump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shaking my head at you. You should know this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just. I think. Oh man, I think they were actually making some kind of new dance craze. <laughs> okay, this is slide the slide, pump the pump. Yeah, and, and that's how you do the humpty help. Yeah, once got busy in a Burger King bathroom. Uh, yeah, that's a reference that is about uh, about as old as I am. Okay, <laughs> so oh man, uh, let's see here. Whose turn is it to read the next one? I believe it's mine. Yeah. So Slade says the best MP experiences, multiplayer experiences I've had in arcades. Do these still exist? Uh, they do in Japan. Uh, <laughs> were the Metal Slug, Time Crisis, House of the Dead, and Dance Dance Revolution series, along with the Jurassic Park Lost World game. Oh, you only say uh, that because of the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> I was... I was, I had to search my memory. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> that doesn't happen in the game. No. <laughs> um, uh, I was never much of a fighting game guy, uh, but a lot of those were... A lot of fun as well. Yeah. Yeah, not um, a lot of fighting game representation on here. Yeah. I, w- I will I, have to echo his comment of Jurassic Park Last Lost World. Um, I enjoyed that arcade game a lot. I liked it because of the pooping. Yeah. Just because you had to shoot a dinosaur as it was pooping. <laughs> and you could never do that. Yeah. but I just, I never got how like shooting a dinosaur in the tonsils was like integral to not getting eaten <laughs> yeah it's it's they, get, they get filled up on bullets yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's but they have diet. a very quick metabolism yeah. yeah um yeah i like that game and then i also like uh i believe we already mentioned it yeah the star wars game the trilogy yeah. game mm-hmm. pretty solid those are only for nostalgic reasons, though. Nothing more. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, o- OMG a moose. There we go. Or Omega moose. Omega moose. <laughs> yes. Oh, the, <laughs> the ender, final moose. The ender of mooses. Uh, a tie <laughs> between Aliens vs. Predator and the D&D arcade games. D&D is an obvious choice for anyone who has ever played it or even bought the release on Steam. An action RPG that you can play with your friends next to you? Sign me up. And Aliens yes. vs. Predator is basically the best parts of the movies, but letting you play them and ending each stage with a Capcom trademark. Oh. Uh, not to mention, I got to play through AVP with Gary while Cole watched. Sorry, Cole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that the one? It's kind of like a, a fixed emplacement gun. 
No, you might be thinking of uh, of uh, Terminator Two: Judgment Day. See, no, it was it was at least an Aliens game. I'm not sure if Predators got invited. Yeah, uh, no, it's uh, it's another one of the uh, I think it's Capcom beat 'em ups. It's uh, in the same uh, okay, kind okay. of vein yeah, series. Yeah, it's like Sunset Riders or The Simpsons. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they 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 played the shit out of AVP. <laughs> uh, yeah, at uh, ground control again. Uh, speaking of that time, Pac-Man Championship Edition as a tabletop arcade game is awesome. And if I had uh, uh, if, I, if I had one, I'd invite friends over like every day for that game plus drinks. C- yeah, cocktail like drinking and arcades go together so well. Hence, barcade. Oh yeah. Hmm. Wait, is this a thing? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a like a it, it's. I can't name all of them, but Barcade is specifically one in uh, Brooklyn, I think. Correct. Yeah. And then uh, Ground Control's out in Portland. There's one in Chicago that I know of. Um, yeah. Just uh, like what they'll do is they have, uh, you know, either those cocktail ones that actually have places for uh, for drinks or the stand-up ones, they will just have uh, drink holders affixed to them and just they okay. serve they serve beers and you just go around and play. Huh. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I want to also give a shout out to the Aerosmith game because I just remember that <laughs> Revolution game. X, where it, the music yeah, is not your weapon. Because it was a good game. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's like the Demolition Man of arcade games. <laughs> yeah. What What was the premise of that? Like that. That's one of those games I always saw. Uh, you know, doing it way what they call it like attraction mode i could never figure out what the heck was supposed to be going on mm-hmm. no. so it's like half-life 2 but instead of guns you just have cds mm-hmm. and it's as if steam had or if valve had to work in a product placement of aerosmith throughout yeah. the entire game yeah <laughs> so, so there's like a new world order-esque army that is being sent out to stop all rock and roll and aerosmith happens to be like the leaders of the resistance and so you have to stop the and so everything is uh it, it's it's uh, like digitized full actors kind of like uh oh gosh okay. uh like mortal Kombat or uh lethal enforcers it's like a yeah, it's, it's yeah, like a rock and roll lethal enforcers ones. yeah 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 uh don't yeah. give up <laughs> but the worst digitized version of love in an elevator <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um, that should be my ringtone, actually. <laughs> Some music from that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, no, we did that on the uh, the, fir- the first episode of uh, uh, Abject Suffering, actually. Nice. So that was a good time. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there was a distinct moment, maybe we call it the 80s, I'm not sure, where uh, like... Uh, oppressive, government out, <laughs> oppressive government outlawing rock was like its own genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pump up the volume with uh, with Christian Slater. Uh, took over, it, you know, it, it took over the, the the imagination of a nation, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, John Lithgow out there saying you can't stop that sexy dancing, you know. <laughs> yeah, nobody puts Lithgow in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've doubled back on myself. Oh man, uh, Dave, David, what's Phil say? So this is. Um, I see that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has been covered. So I only. So I have to mention the food memory I have of going to my only local pizza parlor. By local, I mean twenty miles, hmm. and playing the three-man version of Super Off Road. Oh shit! Yeah. Their steering wheel controllers took a lot of abuse from greasy fingers. But for me, it was a great way to pass time before eating a great meal. Is that the top-down racer? Yeah, yeah. So yes, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a similar one was also like RC Pro-Am that was like that. Uh, and w- what was great is you actually could, uh, like over multiple games, uh, boost the stats of your, uh, of, your, of your rally cars or whatever they were. Right, and you yeah. could like buy nitros and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and so like 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 any of those that were like top down by necessity, you had to be able to uh, rotate the, uh, the the steering wheels, to, you know, more than so basically free rotate. So like on an actual uh, steering wheel, it stops at a certain point because the wheels can only go so far, which led to all those games being played by a lot of people, kind of like foosball, <laughs> where people just kind of slapped at the wheels to make it spin as quickly as they could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is good memories. I love arcade games. Can, can I throw out uh, one extra one? Yeah, sure. Um, do you remember? I think we actually uh, played it at Dennis's uh, uh, bachelor party. Uh, 
because apparently for a bachelor party we play video games cuz yeah anyways um the rambo game um oh yeah <laughs> oh first blood like a was it a light gun shooter yeah yeah more or less it was a light gun shooter that, like, at every other level, it would pull out this weird, like, cutscene that kind of did the, the light gun equivalent of a quick time event. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it would be like, you know, you have to sneak up on a dude and, like, knife him, knife the sentry, but for some reason you're using a light gun to do it. <laughs> um, similarly, I think there's one where you had to like shoot a bow and arrow and like shoot the arrow um, through the presumably bulletproof uh, window of a uh, attack helicopter avatar star. Oh my god! So this is actually uh, this is actually like a like a recent game. Like it's, it's a, I mean it's yeah. it's 3D. Like this this is oh the, yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah, cool. It's... I was picturing like Operation Wolf or something like that. <laughs> no, although not that different in practice. <laughs> wow, yeah, they're like, they're like they're, they're, there's a there's a whole crop of those, like especially in the racing scene. Like, there's one company that's actually making a lot of money right now by putting out uh, like Fast and Furious uh, racing games and like Fast and Furious bikes and stuff, like just these weird licensed titles that are making uh that, that are making this comeback and you know basically where all of the old Area 51 cabinets used to be. <laughs> I do feel like there is some weird thing where arcades are the only realm, or realm in video games where you can have decent license, like movie licensed games. Example. Uh, well, we we've been talking a lot about like Aliens and Star Wars is mm, and yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I I mean I guess I guess a lot of these aren't directly licensed. Uh, directly movies, so maybe that's not fair. But. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, like, I would totally agree for, like, pinball. Like, you know. That's true. The Adams Family pinball machine is amazing. Twilight Zone pinball, amazing. Like, I, I can't think of just a straight pinball machine that isn't licensed. But then hmm. again, I'm not great at pinball, so I don't know. Actually, there are a few. Uh, there are more than a few. You can find them at the Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. Hmm. <laughs> there's, there's one that's really awesome where it's a bar fight pinball machine. And so at a certain point, there's a person that turns around and you have to hit him with the pinball yeah. to beat him, to simulate <laughs> boxing him. It's great. It's great. See, I felt like my, my trouble with a lot of the like more – the cooler pinball machines is I don't have a lot of control. And I feel like a lot of the more artistic, for lack of a better word, pinball machines kind of – kind of trade on like being able to like actually aim yeah Mm. i don't know i never feel like i'm in control of pinball (laughs) yeah it's like the fast and the fierce when you're not in (laughs) control you're not oh you beat me to it (laughs) let's let's tokyo drift away from that Uh, (laughs) which Uh, apparently was fairly decent arcade game (laughs) i played it it's i mean it's all right you know it's a racing game Oh man, Ben! Have you gotten a chance to say what yours is? Uh, I name dropped some, but mm-hmm. let me read Jala's comment because she shares a lot of other ones that I'd also like to name drop. Mm-hmm. Um, she said, "Jala says Star Wars Pod Racer. Um, that was awesome. Just uh, as an experience, although I sucked at it. Uh, as to playing with people, lots of Area Fifty One, X Men, Simpsons, and D and D Shadow over Mistara. Yeah, but." Dude, totally got a second. Area Fifty One, X Men, and Simpsons. Those yeah. were those were three good ones. Yeah, I just I have such great memories of X Men and Simpsons. Can I share an awesome memory of X Men? Yes. It was when I was in Ironton, Ohio, which is like the middle of nowhere, Ohio, which is where my dad lives. Um, we were at a bowling alley, and there was a X Men arcade machine, and it was broken to the point where you could pull forward the the console with the buttons on it Hmm. and you could see the part where the coin acceptor was and where the sensor was or where a quarter would like flick it when it is inserted Mm -hmm. so you could just open it up tap that a whole bunch of times and get infinite credits oh and be a filthy thief (laughs) yeah pretty much and but that was the only time that i've ever beaten the x-men game in you know in an arcade setting yeah but that game well 
All right, so that game is a filthy thief to people's quarters <laughs> with how it's set up. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny because I think that game was found exclusively at bowling alleys. That was my experience as well, not with, you know, the thieving, but uh, but with uh, <laughs> it, being, being there at the bowling alley for, like, peewee bowling on, like, Saturday mornings, like, just totally not wanting to be there, and uh, in between frames – going up to play X-Men, and whenever it came to be my turn, they would have to come and grab me until it got in so much trouble that I, I, I think I got kicked out of the league. I can't be sure. <laughs> and then uh, and then at the, uh, oh my gosh, at uh, the Coliseum, the uh, the skating rink, they had, a, yes. uh, they, they had a Simpsons machine, and whenever I'd go there for a birthday party, you know, for a skate party, I would spend all of my time playing The Simpsons because, holy crap, it's The Simpsons. Like, I love The Simpsons. Yeah. I'm what Young was, Cole um... in the mid-90s. They they also had one. It was like ah, some sort of like Vietnam War themed like shooter, where you you would like uh, I think it was like uh, joystick, you know, controlling your little crosshairs, and you would like kill all the dudes on screen, and then your guys would proceed to sort of sashay to the next like screen. Do you remember that? Yeah, apocalypse a little bit. now. <laughs> That's now in arcades <laughs> it's back in pog form <laughs> yeah huh, and yeah I, I have no recollection of that one I, I, I spent like i said i spent so much time playing the simpsons yeah that that was a great game yeah then that place burned down uh, <laughs> whoa way to bury the lead on that story <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that like arson i think or it might have, thinking- it, it might have been insurance fraud <laughs> i don't know Oh gosh! Burn down as coliseums do. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then I'll round us out with Jeffrey Lawton here, Geo Law, coming in, playing anchor, saying, "Man, time crisis is just really satisfying." That recoil, uh, but uh, but it is the picture for the multiplayer. What? So I guess that'll probably be covered. Oh, but it's the picture. I didn't even see that. It's the picture that on the on the Facebook post that uh, that Dennis shared. So yeah. Uh, Time Crisis, strangely enough, only came up when talking about uh, House of the Dead. But uh, yeah, that recoil is great. Uh, the, the the adding a cover mechanic really brought a lot to that. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do feel like I I have probably developed some sort of like Pavlovian response to it. if someone just randomly shouted action i would try to like kill everyone i saw <laughs> so you wander onto a set and then just somebody shout yeah, and did action and then you just draw <laughs> just, I'm just it's time <laughs> james franco died tragically today <laughs> i'm just saying i i think it was secretly a plot by the communists to like turn ch- children into sleep rage oh yeah manchurian candidates for sure i mean what other reason could there be <laughs> yeah Olcom's razor <laughs> oh no, that man. that was one of those games uh a, a little bit similar uh to oh Oh, like Street Fighter was the same thing where, like, if you actually paid attention to the storyline, it makes no sense. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things. It's uh, it's like it's like a knot. The more you pull at it, the more it tightens. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So thank you, everybody, for responding to that. And thank you, Dennis, I think, for uh, putting that out while you're on vacation. So I didn't ask you or, to do that. Uh, so... Or whichever <sighs> random admin we've made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know so there, there there have been some long dark nights. <laughs> oh man, just adminning everybody at will. So a random randos. Yeah. Random. So if you want to pr- participate in the conversation, that is Facebook.com slash the level podcast. Uh, those generally go up on Tuesday afternoons or some such. Arr. The grime. Now it is time for the grime where we talk about things we have been playing. Uh Dogs, I, I, I have been playing much. You have been playing much, I, I, or no? You have I, not? I, I have not. I, I can have, jump in. Do it. I've, I'm playing a game. <laughs> oh wow! I, am, I know this is an exciting time in podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I so I think I had mentioned this last episode, but I had ordered a uh, Bioshock One because we, I think, as a collective, I think we. Announces we're going to play through Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite to 
you know, be current. And uh, I also got Dead Space 2 because I that was a series that I played the first game but never really picked up anything else on it. Mm-hmm. So I started playing Dead Space 2. Oh, nice. Yeah. I I had a limited amount of time to play games this week because I was in a wedding in Detroit for, I think, five of the days. But, uh, yeah, so I've basically just gotten into the the intro. Oh, where gosh, just, that intro. It's just a lot of dying, it's a lot so, of blood. That is one of the best Which intros in a game. Which one are we talking about? Dead Space 2? Oh, okay. Dead Space 2. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's cool. It's cool. I guess that, I don't know that dude. It gets right up in your face. That's a, I think it's not too much of a spoiler. It happens like right away, but also yeah. the game is six years old. But <laughs> it's a good turn. It's a good turn. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see how this game goes. But uh, it's not as scary as the first one from when I played that in college, because yeah. that was a that was a long trek to get through that game. The comparison that was bandied about was that uh, Dead Space 2 is to Dead Space 1 as Aliens is to Alien. That's a good comparison. Yeah. Yes. And so, like, Dead Space 2 is going to hit you over the head with, like, a lot a lot of gore and, I would say, kind of, like, exhaustion. Whereas Dead Space mm-hmm. 1 is definitely about uh, kind of tension and suspense. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I think that's that's a fair comparison. That's pretty I've I've only jumped once so far in the game. So... Whatever. Jumps a, what? I've only jumped once while playing the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I've only played for like five minutes, so that's still <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Hmm. So we'll see. I'll keep yeah. progressing in that, so I'll actually have something to talk about. But yeah. I have a lot of good memories of that game, so I'm going to be curious to have you bring those back up. All right. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. On to you, David. What do you got? <laughs> sure. Sorry. I, w- I was uh, looking at... I- Sorry, I got sidetracked by <laughs> Bioshock. Um, no, um, I I actually uh, mainly have been playing um, the. They're currently doing a open beta for uh, Wildstar. Have Have you guys seen this at all? No. It's basically. Um, I'm not sure who actually makes it, but it's more or less what would happen if uh, Pixar made an MMO. Okay. So it's uh you know it's uh oh you know set in kind of a science science fictiony uh setting you know um you know they've just uh you've got your you know totalitarian like evil faction and your like scrappy underdog faction and they both um have you know just gone to this planet that's um you know is the home world of the you know ever present like aliens who came before and suddenly disappeared uh, so it's re- you know real generic uh oh uh sci-fi thing but it's done with you know real cartoony kind of pixar style presentation and aesthetics that's real cool mm-hmm. um so i i know it's it's really really good um the character design the um Stuff like that is really, really neat. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a furry aesthetic to it. Say that again. Has kind what? of like a like a furry aesthetic to it. Uh some some of it does. Uh, most notably, wait, 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 wait. you're going to need to describe what a furry aesthetic is. I mean, you know, just go, go into a convention hall and fucking no. Um, uh, <laughs> what, what I mean is like at, at least one of the factions looks to be, uh, you know, uh, let's say just I don't know, like. Like animal people, anthropomorphic. It, it looks like <laughs> furries. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, what it is is uh, one of the races on uh, the evil side are basically like uh, tiny psychopathic gerbil people. Okay. Um, uh, they're basically Stitch. Um, so um, yeah. <laughs> Where's so, Dennis when we need him? Yeah, let's get him right. pissed off. Exactly. So uh, so yeah, uh, it's um. I think, like, on the evil side, you basically have, like, evil space fascist humans, um, giant killer robot people, killer lizard people, and, uh, like, the before-mentioned, um, oh, evil hamsters. Yeah. Um, and I think my favorite part about them is, uh, one of the options for faces for the evil hamsters is just, like, the glassy-eyed, like, gerbil eyes. Hmm. 
<laughs> like photorealistic gerbil eyes. Yeah, like like literally like take up like two thirds of their you know face, just like all you know, just like puppy dog eye, you know, you know that sort of thing. Yeah, um, that's that's actually one of my favorite things about it. Uh, one one of the races on the um, uh, the exiles, kind of the the rebel side, is basically um, cat people. You know, mm-hmm. like anime s cat people cat people run yeah <laughs> but it's done um i would say kind of self-awarely in that it's very much very obviously done to be like we're going to completely double down on making this as anime-esque as possible yeah well i mean tell to, t- tell me about the play honestly sure, the, ac- the actual play um it's um I don't know how much um, how much you guys played like any of the recent MMOs where kind of the big thing now is you know for your enemy's powerful attack they'll um, you know mark out on the ground where it's you know going to happen so you have to get out of the way. It's like a League of Legends thing. Uh yeah yeah exactly. So basically um, they kind of have uh, built their system around this in that um, that happens for almost every attack. And so, um, a lot of, um, there are melee, um, characters, but there's a lot more gunplay. And so all of your guns will have like a relatively small, like slice of, you know, where you'll hit or where the enemy will hit. So it's a lot more kind of creates, you know, a lot more dodging out of the way and, you know, moving as you go through the fight. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, each of uh, there's I think six classes, each of which has their own um, resource system. Um, you know, very well animated. It's, uh, it seems like they're definitely trying to make the gameplay a little bit more fun than MMOs usually are. Yeah. Well, you've been chasing after this for a good long while, though. Like the action based MMO, right? Yeah, yeah. And I would say it's not. You know, it's not completely, you know, just an action game, but I feel like it takes the the kind of the traditional uh, MMO format and actually makes it much more fun, much more skill based. Yeah. Um, and you know, also the I feel like the the animations kind of help with it because they do a lot more. Well, I guess the the animation's much more animated. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean just like the, looking at the videos here. It you know, it, I can't tell how distracting that would be, honestly, from from like the 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 play that it's it's expecting to do. Like even down to like the gunplay, it looks like it takes place in cones, like yeah, outside exactly. of it. So you know, they get around like lag by having it not so much be, hey, is your cursor over this person when you hit? It's more, is the person inside the cone? And then if they are, then it applies the combat stats to it. It's just my guess based on looking at what I what I see, right? Yeah, yeah, that's basically what it is. It also allows you to do um oh to do uh multiple enemies at once, uh, you know, with this you know, kinda of do an AoE naturally. Yeah. Um and what one of the things I like is that they have the uh Quake esque uh announcer, so if you get like a double kill or whatever. So, um, I mean, how much of this is persistent world, and how much of it is like, oh, here's an arena for you to fight in? Like, is this like just a more action based Guild Wars? Um, from what I've seen, it's all been persistent. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, like, just uh, you, you say in the announcer thing, and then just kind of looking at what I see here, which makes it actually look like a little bit like Quake. Um, yeah, no, yeah. no. The announcer is. Uh, is just for uh, flavor. I I also enjoy the fact that when you gain your first level, the announcer <laughs> shouts, "You know, oh shit! You gain you gained a level. Way to go, cupcake!" Huh. <laughs> just just it's it's very uh, it's more just kind of supporting the the over the topness. Yeah. Uh, the the other cool feature they have is in addition to choosing your uh, your um, class you also choose your path which is you basically can choose like uh whether you want to focus on combat uh building lore or exploration and so is it it similar to like uh uh borderlands 2 where or just borderlands where you pick a 
class, but then there's like a branch within each class. Well, no, it, uh, it's more. I mean, it does have that, but it's more. Um, you'll then get um, side uh, quests related to your um, uh, path, and it's almost kind of like a profession or like the way like crafting systems tend to be. So, um, for example, um, if you play the science class, you basically get missions to scan various like creatures and objects in order to get more background lore. Uh, the uh, there's a settler is one of them where basically you can like build up um, oh semi persistent um, structures that other players can use to get buffs. Uh, the combat uh, profession you can basically start uh, multi like uh, multiplayer um, quests on the fly to kind of like horde mode type things. Yeah. So it's more of uh, kind of a little bit of a customization in terms of like how you get your uh, side quests. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like uh, the, the game's approximation of crafting too. Yeah, I mean there there is actually a crafting system i've not done anything with it um yet but there it does exist but yeah it's it's very similar in practice to kind of the role uh crafting uh you know the way crafting's usually handled yeah so this is this is wildstar uh and seasoft is the publisher maybe the developer okay. behind it yeah it's the guild wars people so guild okay. wars and lineage and a bunch of other stuff that looks uh korean in nature also city of heroes um, yeah, but that's not a thing anymore, so it is not worth mentioning. Not if Kickstarter has its way. What? There's a Kickstarter yeah. to bring City of Heroes back? Uh, yeah, I, I actually haven't looked into it as much as I should because City of Heroes is one of the greatest games of all time. Uh, but, um, no, it's a Kickstarter basically to do a spiritual successor to City of Heroes. Yeah, City of Titans. Yeah, and I th- I think maybe they have like some degree of like blessing from <sighs> someone. All right, so here's here's my opinion on some of this bullshit. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> like you see this in you know just in in kickstarters and especially looking at like some of the worst kickstarters out there. Like people saying, "Hey, we can make a full featured MMO for like fifty thousand dollars." No, no, you can't. Even then. Even here, you know, the Phoenix Project, City of Titans, their goal was $32,000, th- uh, sorry, uh, so was, uh, $320,000, which, like, doesn't seem like enough money to make an MMO. Like, what this what this feels like is, is, is like, a take a money and, and run kind of thing. Like, you just, that's true. Like, I, I, just, I just can't see that ever being successful. Yeah, um, that does seem rather low. I've, has anyone ever... Like, is there been a rule of thumb put out for how much, like, an MMO? I mean, a shitload, uh, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I would have thought at least a million. Yeah. I mean, like, if you were talking order of magnitude, probably in the millions. Right, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, just kind of like, because you have that initial money and, like, hey, maybe you're going to get, you know, hey, maybe you're going to get some uh, subscription you know details right like you're you know like people are actually going to subscribe however uh I, you know i haven't read the rewards in detail you know in, in any close measure however uh oh man i'm saying however way too much i assume a lot of it is like lifetime membership or something like that so what they've done is they've gotten you know they've basically mortgaged to the future viability of this and you know when they put this out and everybody gets to the end game within like a week and like, oh, like we really didn't think about making more content. Uh, like maybe we'll have enough money to do it and then people go away and then they don't have any subscription details or they don't have any subscription uh, coming in. It's it, yeah, it just kind of seems, I don't know, maybe a, an MMO isn't something you crowdfund. Maybe like you crowdfund a thing with a finite end. Ugh. Yeah, I I don't know. Have have there been any crowdsourced MMOs? I can't say I've oh, actually heard I mean, of any. I mean, there've been plenty. Like uh, the the awful Kickstarter's thread on something awful is is full of them. It's like, hey, twenty thousand dollars for a full featured MMO that has a you know fully deformable terrain, and you can everybody has their own house, and like all this weird stuff that sounds like you actually kind of don't know what you're talking about, do you? Well, I guess <laughs> I was meaning ones that actually made it to market and any degree to which that's as far as i know 
I've, okay. I've seen plenty that are funded, but I haven't actually seen like on joystick or whatever. Hey, here is, you know, like here is an MMO that was crowdfunded and it was the best thing ever. And everybody was very happy, <laughs> you know, even the most, even, <laughs> and they had cake and like even the most successful, like that star citizen or whatever, that's never coming out. <laughs> like, right. ugh. sorry, didn't mean to fly off the handle there. No, no, like, yeah, that uh, that does seem weird. I, I've actually followed it. Uh, the only scenario I could see that being successful is if they were try- planning on literally resurrecting City of Heroes and, like, getting access to the original resources. Yeah. And I would think NCSoft wouldn't be cool with that, but yeah. who knows? Yeah, if it was like, hey, give us the money to buy the license so that we can just run a shard of this, you know, kind of frozen in time so people can, you know, can continue with it. But, you and know. Grant, I would pay for that. I yeah. mean, but. Mm-hmm. Oh, anything else, man? Um, no, I think that's about it. Cool. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I usually do most of my game playing on the weekends. However, I had a bachelor party this weekend. Um, all day. Weddings are in the air, man. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, all, all day on uh, all day on Saturday was the bachelor party, and then all day on Sunday was Cole laying in bed sick. So that's <laughs> led to Cole being very busy and trying to catch up on stuff because weekends are also when Cole does uh, everything. So, was it was it viral sick or was it boozy sick? It was boozy sick. All right. I don't have a lot of like an awful lot of situations where I like drink all day, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> Which is good. I think that says something about the way I live my life. However, just you know. just drink all night, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, but yeah. So it, uh, you know, it, it was it was a good time. However, got really sick, came home, threw up all night, uh, slept in for most Aww. of the day. Yeah, no, it's just kind of like, oh, like what that says to me is, yeah, that time of your life has passed. Enjoy, like, enjoy, like, not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, uh, all, all I really have to bring to the table is uh, mobile stuff so i'll kind of get two out of the way here real quick who knows uh let's take a look here so the big one and this is one that i am kind of going to talk about just to talk shit is trials frontier okay so you guys know about the uh good what is it okay so trials uh really fun games especially on like the consoles you know when you pay 15 dollars and then you get a game that you can play uh, for as long as you want, because that's the way that games used to work. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, kind of like a motorcycle stunt game. So it's like side scrolling and you have control over your speed and your tilt as you go along. And the idea is you do stunts as you go from left to right. And, uh, the, you know, you want to get through the obstacles without crashing. It's kind of like a really difficult skill based game. Um, and you have, you know, like, I forget if the main ones have upgrades. I think the first couple and the ones I really liked, you just had your bike as it as it was. So, yeah, this has the potential to be really fun. Like, I was playing on the iPad. You know, it does require precision, but it's not like, oh, am I going up or left? Like, you have those controls. So, the like, the, the digital D-pad doesn't bother me an awful lot, right? And I was looking forward to just having this here. I went to download it, and it said free. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, they've done a couple things I really don't like with it. First, they gave it a story, which, you know, <laughs> the story the story of Trials ought to be Motorcycle Man needs to get from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. What is he going to do? Oh, there you go. You're going to help Motor- Motorcycle Man do this. Here. You're going to fall down a couple times, but you're going to be better at it by the end. So have have you know, just just have fun, enjoy the ride, right? No, in, in this, a it's... world where motorcycle man <laughs> needed to cross the screen, yeah, like that should be the story. First they took his wife, <laughs> then they took his children <laughs> to the right side of the screen. <laughs> then he took their lives. <laughs> vroom, vroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so it's like you know you're, you're you're riding along and then there's like the badass motorcycle guy but he's like the villain and all of it takes place so it's, it's called frontier it takes place on like the wild frontier so you're like in a western <laughs> town and you have like Where there's m- plenty of motorcycle trails yeah yeah but it's like post-apocalyptic so they're trying to go for a bit of a they're trying to go for a bit of a uh, um like borderlands kind of feel okay yeah yeah so, like, you know, whatever. Like, if they wanted to make that just the prevailing aesthetic, I think a couple of the games were going in that direction. Fine. Make it look like whatever you want. But, 
ugh, they mess with the play too. So instead of just having a progression of stages that you just have to go through, like I would even go for like the usual model of, oh, you got two stars, maybe do this a little bit faster or with fewer dismounts and you'll get three stars. Cool. Just give me like a hundred stages to do that and charge me $5 for it will be a-okay. However, in this, there are like missions that you have to do. So it's like do a front flip. And then we'll give you some coins that you can use to upgrade your bike so you can get better handlebars for better handling and you need an engine to go faster and blah, blah, blah. And you're going to have to go through dialogue that you don't give any two fucks about. (laughs) (laughs) It's just it was it was an affront. I deleted it off my iPad so quick that I had to actually look up what the name of it was before I came on here because I don't even have it. Oh, any more to reference. Um, Yeah, so there's stupid dialogue, and, like, you start out with a bad bike. So, like, you're going on. It's like, this game is about, like, you know, executing the right moves at the right time. Why would they they add, uh, you know, like, a player disability? You know, like, it it should be my skill that's picking up as I go along and making this possible. Not, like, oh, grind uh, to get the, you know, like, to to get enough coins to buy, you know, this particular thing. Then there's also... Good. The the bad bike is it unusable or is it just really simple? Uh, it's it's almost unusable. So like uh, think about uh, if you played Tony Hawk, uh, like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and you mm-hmm. did like a custom, like, you know, like, like like a custom skater before you spend any money upgrading the stats. Like you kind of jump like bullshit. And you don't really have any balance or whatever. So mm-hmm. like on this, you know, you're required to do actual really really minute adjustments to things and if you're and if you don't have like the right the the right handlebars you can't like if you, if you pull back it's gonna like Whoa, and they do a backflip like standing right there well no you actually need to have like the ability to like lean back by like five degrees because otherwise you're not going to make this jump right huh mm-hmm. yeah yeah and uh like so grinding wouldn't be that much of a problem like okay turn this into a turn this into like an rpgs kind of thing i can kind of get into that whatever however you have fuel okay and each day you get a certain amount of fuel and if you want to play the game more and get better at it and actually like you know unlock things in a certain order uh you have to pay them money to get fuel to go along Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so it's basically like a, a freemium ass. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. So, hence at the beginning of this, why I said, "Oh, I went to download it, and it said free." Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks fine. I kind of like I said, I hate the fiction around it. The characters are ugly and stuff. But when you're actually in the game, it's okay. But all of the trappings around it, I just want, I just want like 50 levels that I can just go through and master. You know, but they're not going to give it to me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's Trials Frontier. Do you guys have any questions about that? I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say? Would you say it is a good game? No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> seven out of ten. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh God. Um, the other one that I played, fortunately, is much better uh, than that uh, because they actually charge you money for it, and then you can, then you own it. Uh, it's called Breakbeat Alley. Okay. Yeah. So uh, think of it as breakout, except instead of having a paddle, you tap on the screen to uh, to knock the ball back. Um, you know, and you know, so when you tap on the screen, it makes like a little circle of force, and so where you tap on it, uh, where you tap on the screen in relation to the ball, gives it a different angle, and the nice. uh, and the blocks kind of advance towards you. And the 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 um, the block you hit gives your ball that color, and if you can hit a block of the same color on, on like on the ricochet, it'll give you more points, etc. And kind of the real trick of it is, um, and you know, aside from the fact that you're tapping this, so it's very very, uh, you know, kind of like physically and dexteritily uh, demanding, um, is that you can tap on the screen and get another ball so you can have i i i've never tested the upper limits i'm kind of working with two right now to see how it works but uh, you can have two on the screen that you are trying to keep in the air um and there's a line that the box can't cross or advancing towards you and uh it even goes so far as if you if you break an entire column of them and you start hitting the back wall they advance faster so you have to be very very uh mindful of where you're targeting stuff so yeah. al- almost like a Space Invaders type of thing. Yeah, like a little bit, except without the shields. You are the shields. Your thumbs are the shields. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a shield. I <laughs> am a shield. Yeah. 
but it's really fun. Like the presentation is great. Uh, you know, the music is just EDM, whatever. But uh, but the but the sound of the ball hitting the, the hitting the uh, the blocks. It sounds like a pinball breaking a glass window. <laughs> it's, just, it's just really satisfying. Like when like when you break one of those. So it's one of the few games that I'll play like with the sound on. You know, when I'm like laying on the couch watching an episode of The Simpsons or something like that. Just when I need something to do with my hands, like it'll just go. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty good. It's called Breakbeat Alley. And uh, in terms of like what I'm looking for in a mobile game as like a short little dexterity challenge, uh, it's it's great. Uh, I'm playing it on the iPad. That seems to work a little bit better for me, even though I am, you know, you're, you're traversing more screen. I'm playing with like with my thumbs. So it, it makes it a little bit easier to uh, pick a side of the screen and then stick with it. Okay. You know, the, you know this, this is my left paddle and this is my right paddle. So I guess it's like pinball in a little bit of a way. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty good. But that's really all. Um, I mean, I've been playing, you know, uh, gosh, Rocksmith. But How's I figure called? you guys are tired of that. It's great. I'm, you know, like I'm progressing on a couple of songs. Um, uh, Mary Jane's Last Dance is tremendous fun uh just because that is even on the lead the kind of guitar that i'm used to playing a little bit uh you know kind of like a little bit of that palm muted chord bass kind of thing like that main riff that dun, 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 dun. yeah uh, i think i just did uh, a tax man there but you know what i mean uh people people <laughs> have heard that song they know um and then my god is the sun by queens of the stone age i'm getting that one up it's pretty close to 100 percent right now and so now How's the transition then when you master a song on there and then you go to a regular guitar? It's easy. Well, I mean, it is just playing the regular guitar. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, and what's what's great about it is like as you master a phrase, um, you know, and I like just uh, if you play it correctly enough times and you fill up the bar and it starts showing you all the notes, it'll show you all of the notes to play, you know, and, and expect you to hit them. But after a while, it just fades the notes out. Okay. So as you're playing it, it's just kind of like, oh, you have the you have the backing track and everything else playing, but you are you don't have any visual reference. You're just kind of going for it. Hmm. Yeah, which Does is which still, is great. Good. When you switch to not playing it with the game, or or maybe this is part playing it with the game. I don't know. Uh, from what little musical playing experience I have, it seems like there's sort of a difference between playing the notes that are written and playing the song the way it's supposed to sound if that oh, makes yeah. sense uh does it do you find any difficulty with that does it make any effort to teach that or what that's part of the mastery process on it honestly man i'm sure the listeners are so tired of hearing this but I've, i i love talking about it so i'll keep doing it uh yeah no, i mean it's me- memorizing the memorizing the notes as they are you know as they are quote unquote supposed to be played like oh you're hitting the right note in the right order at the right time that actually is really detrimental to actually you know remembering how to actually play the song so memorizing it is actually you know and the path to mastery on it is actually figuring out okay what's the intonation like how is this articulated and just the way that i learn music and the way that you know kind of i was taught to learn music is you learn it you 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 learn it in phrases so you know the the, this solo isn't you know okay i know that i'm in you know uh, a pentatonic so i'm just at the fifth fret and i just kind of like noodle around on that like oh there's a there's a bend here and this note is accented and you're playing it more with your ears than anything else right so you know it's like when when, when i I break away from it and i don't know if that's just because i came into it already knowing a little bit you know a little bit about how to play guitar you know you come away from it um uh you know kind of having that built in and the game does a pretty good job of um telling you a little bit about what your intonation should be like it shows you accents it shows you okay this is going to be a harmonic uh it shows you okay this is going to be a hammer on pull off here are slides it has notation for all of that like all the little you know hand tricks that you have to do to get the right sound out of it and to a certain extent you have to learn like okay this is how i make a good sound on this fret like playing really, really high up on the neck is really different than playing really low down on the neck. Um, and that's just stuff that you pick up as you play along. Um, okay. And the audio really helps you out with that because of the tone designer that they have. And just the fact that, you know, because they're playing with the masters, um, you know, like the actual master tracks and, you know, eventually as you master it, um, it fades down the actual, like, you know, it fades down the recorded track and what you're oh, hearing okay. is what you're, is what you're playing. So if, if, you know, a, a beyond a certain level, if what you're hearing is bullshit, you know that you're playing it like bullshit. And so, <laughs> sure. 
sure. <laughs> you know, like, oh, that's all me. So I should probably learn to like be a little bit less sloppy when I strum this power chord or, you know, like, oh, when I'm hitting these, you know, these, these intercord notes. Um, or doing these fills, I should probably be a little bit more mindful of what I'm hitting because I'm getting buzzes and blah, blah, blah. And you iron that out. Because mm-hmm. otherwise the game will judge you. Uh, <laughs> like a little bit. Like, you know, I think we covered this uh, on, on, on one of the episodes where we talked about this. But, um, you know, the, the game's engine isn't so much like it, it's, look, it's listening for what you are playing. Um, or sorry, it's, it, it only penalizes you when you don't play what, what it expects you to. If you play anything extra, it doesn't penalize you. And an actual guitar, like sloppy strumming or sloppy picking, uh, you know, like hitting strings that you're not s- supposed to, can really ruin the sound of what you're playing. So sure. that is something you have to police for yourself. But, you know, the, like the, the, the game gets you, you know, it, it puts you on the 90 yard line, I feel like, insofar as like, here is a facsimile of playing this song with a full band. Um, and you can practice it over and over again, and it will feed you just enough to, you know, to help you get better each time you play. Hmm. Yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah. It's great. I, I love it. You know, it's, uh, it's, I'm, I, I, man, I'm a little bit scared to check how long I've played it, but I think that in general, I've been doing it about a half an hour a day. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you you don't want to think of it in terms of a video game. You want to think of it in terms of practicing music. Exactly. Yeah, and so that is a habit that I've wanted to get back into for a while. Um, you know, and I, don't, I feel like I've I feel like I've given all these reasons before. But you're absolutely right, Ben. Like it it, it is something where it is actually playing music, and it feels a little bit like the logical terminus of that kind of game. And like you know, Ubisoft has just nailed it so so damn hard. <laughs> And I, I am, I, I am eagerly awaiting when stuff goes on, like when stuff goes on sale, because even though there is not a distinct lack of songs, uh, you know, available, I would like to fill out like, oh, there's the Weezer pack, but I don't feel like paying $12 for it. Well, I'll just see when that, you know, when that gets to be a thing, because I'll be damned if I'm not going to play Buddy Holly. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I know that uh, this seems a little cliche to say, but this, <sighs> sort of strikes me as being something that's that's kind of on my like this is the future radar if that makes sense <laughs> uh, I, you know the, the the word i've used to describe the tech is spooky like it works really well right right it, well, it just seems like i i i know it seems like this was sort of seems like some of the realization of what like people started thinking about when like guitar hero got big yeah yeah and then what they kind of got out with uh you know rock band and the drum set and stuff right it's just it's just good that there was uh you know somebody who thought to follow through on it and it was a long road to get there you know there were there are lots of power gigs laying in this game's wake uh (laughs) yeah Hmm. i don't know it's just a delightful game. It really, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have the kind of newbie's perspective coming at it. You know, like, I can't speak to it as, like, a teaching tool for getting you from, you know, complete novice to intermediate. But from, like, intermediate to, you know, whatever is between intermediate and advanced. I wouldn't call myself advanced by any stretch of the imagination after, you know, a month of playing this game. However, uh, you know, it's it, it's great. Yeah, cool. You guys want to button it up? Sure. We got a. It's a short level today. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, you know, but I, th- I think that uh, I think that Dennis is uh, is 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 the soul of our length. <sighs> the so the soul of our lack of brevity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. That- <laughs> that was the 61st level. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, for listening. Uh, you know, we're not going to pimp it every time. However, uh, if you want to get these episodes a day early, if you're if you're thinking, man, I'd like to hear this on Thursday and hear Cole at the begin- beginning of each episode say the date, and it'll be tomorrow. I'm like a time traveler. We have that <laughs> Patreon campaign. It is duckfeed.tv slash tipjar. Uh, clicking the little Patreon button takes you to that, and uh, donating above a certain level gets you that little perk. Um, and so I thank everybody who has gone out and supported that so far. Uh, it is it is humbling and heartening to have that, and uh, that is you know already um, you know we're making plans for that. So fantastic. The other side of the uh, of the tip jar is the Amazon link. Uh, you can just go there and hit that, and then buy whatever you're going to buy, and then we get we get kickback from that. That is still something that. Uh, um, helps keep the lights on. Uh, so yeah, there's that. But otherwise, specific to this show, 
Uh, you know, we have that Facebook page we mentioned before, facebook.com slash the level podcast. And it's been a minute since we had an iTunes review. So if you are of the kind of person who uh, uh, leaves iTunes reviews, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, am I missing anything, you guys? Matt? That seems, seems, seems to cool. be good. Yeah. yeah. So I've been Cole Ross, your host. I am at Cole Ross on Twitter. I've been David Moneysmith, but not anymore. No, um, <laughs> I've been David Moneysmith at Moneysmith777. Uh, ben Merkel at Merkelizer. Cool. And just remember, if you don't know which way to go, just slide the slide and pump the pump. Good night. So at the wedding that you're going to, <laughs> you should try and institute the slide, the slide, pump, the pump. Yeah, the rule. Kick, kick, kick yeah. anybody out who's not doing that particular dance. As a side note, if the slide gets locked back, you're out of ammo. Oh, I learned, I learned that when I died in Nam.